All right, Coach, congratulations on the win. Just what are your kind of initial thoughts coming off of this one? Well, I was pleased with the fact um, in how we finished. We, I think we're a little carrying over from the losses last weekend to a very good team. And, you know, it's hard to, to bounce back from that when you're not a well-seasoned team. And when I say that, we're more than halfway into the season, but we're still learning. Uh, we're constantly still learning, and each each of these teams is brand new to us, um, to this other than Cincy, and then we'll face Houston, who we're familiar with, and and just kind of finding our groove. And, and we actually had to make some adjustments this week to our lineup. They're making adjustments to their lineup. And to be able to roll with that and adapt to that, it took us a little bit in that first set to get acclimated. But once we settled, um, I think we found our belief and our resolve a little bit. Yeah, you mentioned those lineup changes. Did I end up being kind of a coming out party in a way for Annika Sokol, Annika Sokol and Britt Carlson? Annika led in 17 digs. Britt ended up picking up a few blocks and eight, eight kills. Just mm -hmm. well, talk about some of the kind of, I guess, the rationale with those lineup adjustments and how do you think they really worked out once they did get settled? Yeah, well, we... Uh, they both played at different times, you know, in different matches, um, even in the preseason before conference. And uh, so it's not like they haven't seen the floor before, but a lot of it has been adjustments when our offense wasn't firing from the right side. And so, um, you know, or the block presence. And, uh, you know, they've been continuing to get better and filling roles. But, um, you know, we decided to go with Britt tonight for that blocking presence against their outsides. And she did a fantastic job and then contributed some kills um, along the way. How much did that blocking presence really help? Because I noticed that Baylor really had that blocking presence for you guys over there. Uh, last weekend, it's yeah, um, they did. And they had physicality, but so does TCU. And we knew that they were going to take some big rips um, from the outside. And uh, and so I think that that mattered a lot. We did a great job. We almost ended up with three blocks a set. And really at every pin. I mean, Abby got that stuff late in the middle solo, and Abby Hansen. And uh, and I know Lauren Clark had a had one. Um, Willie Emily Wilson had a couple as well. So we were doing a really good job. It's been a focal point for us to try to be more um, assertive and aggressive in our blocking um, and penetrating the net. Um, and we did a good job of it tonight. What would you say is the biggest thing you, you your team learned from that weekend with Baylor? Well, I think Baylor did such a good job of if they didn't score this way, they would score another way. And kind of realizing um, it's about the pulling out the right tool at the right time. You know, they have that those big physical swings, but they also had some shots and way to disrupt our defense. And um, and they were just really smart with their with their execution. And I think there's time and a place to go for it, but there's also time and place to to locate. Um, it doesn't have to be weak. It doesn't have to be soft um, because when we tried to do that almost a little bit too much, we didn't even make it over the net last weekend. And so just being able to execute different areas of the court and really disrupt their defense to make it, them a little bit more predictable offensively, and that's what we did tonight. What was your message to the team after that, for, after that first set? Um, just realize how much in control we are. Um, I think we kind of, similar to the second match against Baylor, when we were Abby was doing a great job. Abby Schomers was doing a great job of making decisions, and then we just weren't delivering. We weren't executing. And I think we started doing that a little bit early. I think we were hitting zero for a while there. And I think she, they just stayed patient through it and then continued to execute um, down, the, down the road. They stayed with it. All right. Uh, TCU outside hitter uh, Melanie Para, mm -hmm. uh, great player, leads uh, the country in a lot of statistics. Yes. Uh, she was out tonight. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit of how much of a relief that is and um, how you would have prepared to neutralize her? Well, we were prepared for both scenarios because we've seen her in matches, recent matches going in and out. Um, due to some aggravation you know injury wise and so we said be ready for both but so we had our players prepared for number 12 for number six you know there could be a lot of different adjustments and so the team was very well um familiar with even though we were surprised not to see her but at the same time okay so this one has you know number 12 has played number six has played here here are her shots so we were ready for that um 
And again, we were making some adjustments on our own <laughs> throughout the week. So it's that time of year, bumps and bruises, you know, kick up a little bit, fatigue kicks in. And, and so we just said, focus on what we can control. Um, but yeah, she's definitely an impact player from the service line as much as she is from the front row. So um, that's, that's a player I'm sure that we were surprised and probably a little relieved that, you know, she wasn't across the net. Now 10 and one at home. Uh, can you speak on the home court advantage and what at the venue and what the crowd brings to the game? Oh, so much, so much. I mean, I know we've set records or, you know, ended up setting attendance records within the top five, I think in program history already this season. So it is fantastic. We heard some of the other sports teams I know um, going for us, <laughs> cheering for us, cheering pretty loud. They do a great job during timeouts in between sets. They're really engaged, and so, and you've got, you know, local fans, you have um, people affiliated with UCF, you have other athletic teams here. Um, it's, it's an awesome feeling, in addition to our athletes, fan, our parents and families. So we love it, and we have some alumni, it's our alumni weekend, so um, just to see some familiar faces in the stands, it's, it's everything to us. We feel the love for sure, and they're, they're very engaged. I, I think everybody's um, loud and tries to impact um, or influence. They, they're they very helpful for challenges <laughs> as well. <laughs> Speaking of the home court, the venue looked a little bit different with the light new light fixtures they had activated for this one uh, with the new LEDs and all the, and the video board got a couple of new stuff too. What's yeah. it been like watching this facility kind of evolve this season? It's been something, right? Because it's been a part of every single one of our practices. I think they've been working on something <laughs> every day this season, it feels like. And on one hand, we could you know, make excuses for it. But on the other hand, uh, we talk a lot about being adaptable and, and competitors adjust and just roll with it because we know that they're trying to roll out so many things in this building. And so just to stay patient and avoid the distractions and block that out, that, uh, you know, these lights came in this week and they're still making some adjustments for sure. So I don't know that we had a home court advantage tonight because even our players were having a challenge, challenging time early with it, but so are they. So. We all have to deal with it and roll with it. Um, after tomorrow's match against TCU again, the team travels to face number 22, Houston. Mm -hmm. How is the team going to prepare for that? Just like we do every other team. <laughs> I mean, they're, we're going to look at who their scores are. We're going to look at how we slow them down. Um, they are a common opponent coming over from the American with us. So there's definitely, you know, some familiarity there. But just like we would, whether it was Texas, KU, whoever it is, TCU, we're going to prepare just like we would any other team. I noticed that with the second half, you really limit errors. You talked about how volleyball is a game, a game of errors. So, do you think that there's like, in a way, there's an intentionality when it comes to kind of getting the errors back down, or do, you, or is it sometimes just really nailing down some stuff, get really getting settled in? No, for sure. We talk a lot about runs and not giving your opponent or allowing your opponent to have too many consecutive runs, whether it's a missed serve on our side. Okay, those happen, right? There's an error. But you can't allow them to get two, three points after that, you know, because it's such a game of momentum. And so we do address that a lot. We play miniature games where we're either down or where they're up and we want to finish, you know, not let the team catch us. So it's we work on those components of the game within the game all the time to be ready for those situations. And again, we need to sharpen that up, I think, a little bit before tomorrow. Um, that's something that got away from us last weekend as well. But we know our opponent has something to do with it. Um, it's just recognizing where we're, you know, making our own errors and trying to be smart, like I said, about our shots. When are those no error situations? We don't have to be perfect, but when is the time that you have to get that ball on the court? And at this level, we have the ability to do that. Britton, Annika, what would you say was the biggest part about their, that you liked about their game tonight? Because, well, they have shown playing time before. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, they set some season highs for themselves tonight. Yeah, well, Annika did a great job behind the service line, executing where we were trying to disrupt um, their, their serve-receive patterns. And then uh, she was just picking up a lot defensively. You know, when they try to, to get a little bit shoddy, she's able to cover ground, cover a lot of ground. So great job defensively. And then uh, same thing Britt defensively on the block. She was just an imposing block. And, uh, and she was scoring early, so made them respect her. We were able to give her, you know, more, more attempts um, to attack that ball, both on the left side and right side. So Last question. What, what do you want this team to take with them in, from tonight into their matchup with TCU tomorrow? 
I think that that assertion and that confidence, not waiting to see what the opponent has, you know, it took a little bit to kind of settle in, and that's not something you want to see from your team is wait and see. So just finding that finding that resolve and that confidence from the get go and really putting it to them, which we've done a lot at home first first match. It's just this is the first time coming back from two losses consecutively. So um, being able to start from the gates. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Mm -hmm.